Intro Algebra Lesson 5-5B, we want to take a little bit more look, or another look at the uh, point-slope form. So just a reminder, in point-slope form we've got y minus y sub 1 is equal to the slope times x minus x sub 1. We are going to be placing values in for the y sub 1 and the x sub 1 because we'll be given a coordinate, that's the point that we're given, and we're also going to substitute a value in for the slope. That's a point that we're either going to be given or we will have to find but we can usually find that from the graph or from a couple coordinates that are given to us. We're not actually going to put anything in for this y or that x. Just remember that. So, our first example, write an equation in point-slope form that passes through the given points. So point-slope form, y minus y sub 1 is equal to the slope times x minus x sub 1. Except we don't know the slope. The past examples that we've gone over, they always gave us the slope. That's okay, because we're becoming pretty good veterans using our slope formula. So we draw a line, two subtraction signs, and we say it's negative 6 minus negative 5. We put 7 minus negative 2. We get our answer with our signs. We go plus positive, plus positive, negative 6 plus a positive 5 is going to give us negative 1. On the bottom, 7 plus the 2 is 9. Now that's not the world's greatest slope, but it's okay. Now, I have two choices. All right. There are two possible answers here. We can have either an answer that involves this coordinate or an answer that involves this coordinate. But either way, I'm going to use y minus y sub 1 is equal to the slope times x minus x sub 1. So let's say I use the coordinate on this side. <clears throat> then I will have y minus the negative 6 is equal to our slope of negative 1 ninth times x minus that x. I might change my signs so that I don't have those subtractions. And I could say y plus 6 is equal to negative 1 ninth x plus negative 7. There's no difference between these answers other than I change the signs so that it's all addition. And that's if I use the coordinate on the right. If I choose to use the coordinate on the left, then I would have y minus negative 5 is equal to that slope of negative 1 ninth x minus negative 2. And again, if I wanted to change my signs, I could say y plus 5 is equal to the negative 1 ninth x plus 2. You do not have to do both. You must just choose one coordinate. It won't matter which one. They're both the same equation. Even though they look a little bit different, they actually are the same. So we use the two coordinates to find the slope. Then we plug in the one point and the slope into point-slope form. <clears throat> now, say we're given this graph and we want to write an equation. Well, we can do the same thing. If you'd like to count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, so it goes up 6, and then it goes to the right, 1, 2, 3, 4, so that's 4. You could say the slope is 6 over 4, which is the same as 3 over 2. If you don't believe that that works, and you'd rather use the slope formula, you can certainly do that. You could go 2 minus negative 4 over 6 minus 2. And if you watch your signs, that becomes plus positive, and that becomes plus negative. So you end up with 6 over 4, which is the exact same thing we had. So whether you use the slope formula, or you count rise over run on the graph, we know the slope is 3 over 2. Now we have to pick a coordinate. It doesn't matter which coordinate you choose. I'm going to go ahead and pick this one just because the numbers are positive, and maybe I have less chance of making a mistake. So when I set it up, it's going to be y minus the y value up there, which is y minus 2, equals my slope of 3 over 2, and then x minus the x value of 6. And there we have it. If you choose the other equation, it's really not any different. It would just be y minus negative 4 is equal to 3 over 2, x minus 2. So these are both equations you could use. Of course, you can make that plus negative 2 and that plus negative 6. You can make this plus positive 4 and this plus negative 2. It doesn't matter. Now, let's say we want to convert it 
so that it's in slope-intercept form. If I want slope-intercept form, then I should be able to do this in two steps. And I don't need to do it to both, but I'm going to do it to both so you can see that they're really the same equation. All right, so we'll start with the one on this side. <clears throat> if we change this to plus positive and plus negative and distribute, you get y plus 4 equals 3 over 2x plus, now here's the trick. If you write this as a fraction, you've got 3 over 2, which is a positive, being multiplied by a negative 2 over 1. The 2's would cancel, but you'd have a 3 times a negative, so it ends up being negative 3. Then, add negative 4 to both sides. You get a grand finale of y equals 3 over 2x plus negative 7, because negatives plus negatives equal more negatives. All right, over here, we can change our sign to plus the opposite and use the distributive property. And that will give us y plus negative 2 is equal to the 3 over 2x plus... Now again, if you want to write that as a fraction, then you have 3 over 2 times negative 6 over 1, and that 2 goes into the negative 6, negative 3, so 3 times negative 3 is negative 9. Then all you have to do is add 2 to both sides, and you will find that y equals 3 over 2x plus negative 7. In other words, the exact same equation. It will not matter which coordinate you choose. If you use the distributive property and shuffle to get y alone, it should produce the exact same equation. You will not have to do both. You just simply pick one or the other. So I made it up here. I did both because it depended on which equation. But if you only choose one, you only have one answer. And then down here, you could convert it with the distributive property and one shuffle. It's really just two steps to go from point slope to slope-intercept form.